Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Quick Cast Episode 8. My name is Jeremy Paul, a.k.a. Sleepy Juice, and this is StarCraft 2, so let's go ahead and get into it. Today, our player sending out a probe already is our blue Protoss, Zedeth, who is actually our hero player today and the person who submitted this game to our cast it. So for any of those who don't know, please submit your games. We love to cast them. It's good practice for us, and you get to keep a cast of your game. Now down on the bottom side, we do have our Zerg player, Mech, who is aptly inappropriately named since there is in fact zero mech for zerg players but that's okay that's totally fine so we can see that the overlord here is already seeing this probe sneaking in so there's not going to be a whole lot of surprise here as long as mech was paying attention and we do have the pylon going down at the natural for the death there also so it looks like he's going to be attempting to fast expand now he may be using the forge there to actually cannon rush the main he also may hold out cannon rest natural or he's just uh, going for a really early scout which is it's entirely possible this is a silver league game so you, we're never totally sure what exactly is going on there are some crazy strats that come into play and they're completely plausible in silver league because not all the reaction times are there and we can see that the, the probe up here is being scouted by this overload now uh, it does look like this probe is going to come down here and drop the forge and if he is going for a cannon rush of the main, it's incredibly late there. He'll have a hard time getting the uh, cannons in range of anything with the creep there, since you cannot build cannons and pylons on creep. It does look like he's going to come down here and uh, try to block that uh, hatchery in the natural if it ever comes down, but it doesn't look like the Zerg player is in any hurry to quick expand there. And it looks like the Zerg player is coming out now. And he's going to lay down that hatch there, and he's going to be moving into a, a two-base build at this point. Now, Polar Knight is the map that we'll be playing on today. Polar Knight is a pretty unanimous, unanimously horrible Protoss map. So a lot of Protoss players veto this map. <laughs> Apparently he stole his minerals when uh, when uh, Zedeth was down there. And he's like, yep. <laughs> a little bit of trash talk. It's good. A little bit of competition. We do have the Nexus going down here. And that's going to put him into a two-base setting also. So it's two-base versus two-base. Now, most Zerg players in this case are going to want to go up to a third base. They want to stay a base ahead. If the Protoss player is actually putting down that uh, that natural uh, Nexus and going for a Forge, uh, he's with no units whatsoever. He doesn't even have a gateway down yet. You can usually go for three or even four hatcheries directly off of that. Root Cats in particular likes to hit four if it doesn't look like there's going to be any aggression. And we do have some Zerglings on the field already, so that's going to make it hard for any sort of cannon rush to actually go down on the third if he is to do that. The Zerglings are just scouting for proxies right now. Proxy Stargates and uh, Proxy Gateways tend to be uh, fairly popular nowadays with the Oracles and uh, Dark Templar also being proxied because it's so cheap to get Dark Templar tech out. And he's looking around and he's not seeing any any proxies anywhere. Now he's not doing a, a Silver League so there was not an incredibly thorough look but it does look like he's now going to push towards the middle and clear out those watchtowers or of any any zealots, and of course there's none. There's a very uh, little as far as production from the Protoss player as of yet. He just has his gateway going down, but he does have the cannon coming down, which is in good good timing because it's sooner or later, and actually as of right now, sooner or later these Zerglings are going to come in and poke at the wall, see if they can get a feel for what's going on. Now we don't have any uh, overlords in the north area for scouting, so these Zerglings are in at this time. And we do have a block there by the probe, and the probe's going to get pulled away. Good micro there, and that cannon's going to take down both Zerglings. Incredible micro there for a silver level player. Z Zedeth pulling that probe right before death, and the cannon senses being aggressive to those Zerglings. The Zerglings not being focus fired on that probe. They was at that point able to take the aggression off of that probe and kill both of those Zerglings. We do have two, player, or two probes in each of the gas for... The death there. He's going to try to work up towards that mothership core, and we have a gas down for the Zerg player, a mech, but no uh, actual workers in there yet. So either he's uh, working on changing, either he changed his mind and wanting to get gas, or he's just preparing ahead. Right? And in Silver League, it's okay to completely prepare ahead. There's times when you're you're not totally sure. Now, in quick casts, we normally go through the games and we try to pick one concept to actually go over for the game um, so that lower league players and new players can actually get into the game a little bit more, understand a little bit more the basics, and use those in their games. Now today I actually have two different topics from this game to go over, and the first one being having a game plan. Now 
Day 9 in particular goes over a lot of times in his dailies how you should have a, a game plan, some sort of mid-game plan that you're going to do. Um, and he bases them a lot, a lot around how many bases you're going to be going for. If you're going for three bases, you're going to be going for either some three base timing or a full-on macro mode. If you're going for two bases, you're going to be going for a timing at some point. Now, both of these players, the Zerg player in particular at this point, is still not first not scouting any of the, the tech choices from the Protoss player here, but also he is not, you can kind of see, he doesn't have a whole lot of vision there. In fact, no vision whatsoever. But um, he's also not going for a third hatch. So both of these players are staying on two bases. We're coming up, closing on the eight minute mark, so we do have tech coming down. So it's not unheard of for the Protoss player to be on two bases, but the Zerg player in particular should have one of these bases already. It looks like all three are open. He hasn't even tried to knock down the rocks in the back. We do, however, have a Roach Worm coming out kind of late, and two Evolution Chambers, so at least he can start upgrades if that's what he so chooses. In Silver League, I do actually feel that upgrades are a really good way to get an advantage in the game. Most people just tend to forget about them. If you can actually prioritize them, you can win with just gateway units, or in this case, just roaches, if that's what he wants to go for. Now, we do have, for the Protoss player, we do have the Council coming down, and we do have uh, Robotics Bay coming down, so he's going to be going for Colossi, and it looks like he's either going to be, he's not getting the upgrades as of yet, so either he's going to be going for Blink, or Charge, or even possibly into Templar or DTs, but kind of going back to where we're going, I don't feel that either of these players actually has a mid-game plan. They don't have some clean timing they're going for. It doesn't look like the Protoss player is going to go for a Colossus push, like a one Colossus timing or a two Colossus timing. He's definitely not going for an Immortal Sentry all-in or any sort of Blink all-in. So he's not no longer building probes here, and, he, and the Zerg player is no longer building drones. We're stuck at 45 probes and 50 some odd drones, and they're not going up anymore. They're now producing army units for as far as the, the Zerg player is concerned, and when the Zerg's fully committing to making roaches, he just can't make drones. The way the larva mechanic works, it doesn't do that. Now, so we do have a situation where both players are going for, they're putting themselves into a situation where they're in a two base all in, which normally is not a bad idea. You have Mass Grandmaster players, you have MC in particular who's famous for doing two base all ins. But what we have now is we don't have a clear plan on what those two base all ins are. We have the Zerg player who's doing roaches, just pure roaches. He is doing um, 1 1 upgrades right now, but we do have he's going into a very late timing. I mean, he's already going on 11 minutes here, and he's still only at 116 supply and supply block. So it's not a clean timing, it's not a well-organized timing. It may still work. Now, it's Silver League, so it may still be do enough damage. It may actually break in through that wall. We do have a lot of Protoss players have problems with force fields at this level, so he may completely miss the force field, and the roaches will just come in and destroy. Now, we have 1-1 one, one timing coming down. We have a Twilight Council coming down, so the money, the gas for the Protoss players being spent in tech right now. So this is actually a really good time to hit if you can hit. Now we do see the Protoss player has really good vision with that observer of that army, so he does know what's coming. And his his composition is actually really good for this. Now on the Protoss side, I also feel like we don't really have a very good sense of what we want to do in this game. Um, we can see the 1-1 upgrades have finished for the Zerg player, and he's actually moving out now. That's a very good uh, for that level player to actually know to push when 1-1's finished. That's actually really good. You don't see that very often. We do also have the Templar Archives finishing. We have a second attack coming down for the Protoss player, and even more Colossi coming out as we're going into this. So here's the push that it's come down to. He's going to waltz up there. The Colossi are already taking shots at it, and the Zerg are kind of getting a good trying to get a good angle there. The Zealots are coming in as a great meat shield. Now, Roaches should be able to eat through Zealots. Now, it, oh, some wonderful force fields. Cuts off the entire army there, and the army's stuck behind there. He does burrow down to try to get out of there, but there's an observer there, so there's nothing going on there. They can't just hide. They are, however, going to break through here. There's just no more Zealots, and it looks like the sentries aren't getting microed back, so they're going to get taken out, too. Now, the Roach army is going down to uh, quite a fair amount, but you can see that the Protoss player on the bottom actually has more lost resources at this point because he lost his entire army. He just has a Colossus there. He does have a third one about to pop out now, but the Roaches are pushing down on the front, and the third Colossus is walking right into them. Oh, luckily the, the Roaches are pulling back. That overcharge got him to pull back right when they needed, right when the, the Protoss player needed him to, because that otherwise that Colossi would have gone down. 
it wouldn't have had a chance. We already have two Colossi down without no shields at this point. We do have some rogue overlords actually coming in to try to take on the rest of the army. Um, so overlords are funny because they will go where your armies rallied. <laughs> and there he goes. He catches it, so he's going to pull it back. Now we did have uh, one attack finish. We do have Storm coming down in the second attack, and we do have a Spire coming down, and also two two for the Zerg players. As far as we also have, uh, we also have uh, Roach uh, speed coming down now, also, which is good. Now, um, about that timing. We kind of see as we go again and again, here come the roaches again. The zealots are able to pull meat shield, but they're just not good enough against those roaches. What we really need is force fields, and there we go. We have some force fields catching those roaches in. Unfortunately, the army wasn't there to pin it back against into that force field. That's when those zealots come in handy. You want to drop those force fields and then pin the roaches with those zealots, because the zealots will actually win in a one-on-one -on -one fight, but right now they're an upgrade behind in armor. We do have a good time warp there, keeping them from sliding off to the right, but they are going to push in here and they're going to focus down all these sentries again. All these sentries are going to go down. That's a lot of gas we're losing at this point. It is completely even as far as the resources lost at this point. And we do have the Mothership core going with the Photon Overcharge there. We do have that extra damage coming in and here comes some more Zealots. The Colossi are able to push back the entire army here. We did lose that gateway there, but that's a completely acceptable loss for this. It looks like, the, unfortunately, being on that two base there's only so much you can do is to keep that pressure coming. He does not have that third base for production. He does not have it for um, keeping that income coming in. You can see he actually is at, at 2K resources at this point with, with the 50 workers, but can't spend it because he just doesn't have the larva for it. Now we do have the second armor coming down. Now, kind of moving into the next phase here, we talked a little bit about that timing attack. What we, to kind of conclude on that, what you want is you want a clean timing attack for a two base all in. You're going with three immortals and you know uh, warp prism, or you're going with two colossi, or you're going right when one one finishes, or the zerg play, a player. You're going right when you have some vipers. Uh, viper timings are really good, especially against colossi builds. Or you're going right when your hy hydras start popping up. Um, if you're going for two base muta, I guess in silver league that would probably work also. Uh, Protoss players have a lot of problems with silver uh, league now. Kind of going into this next phase, we just saw we had a warping come in and those reinforcements. Like we have another one coming in right now. And, but the meanwhile, the Zelts are taking on this army. The reinforcements are all the way on the other side of the map. The second thing I kind of want to talk about this game is uh, proxy pylons. So having forward pylons that actually help you out. Now we do have the army coming in here and they're trying to. Oh, great storms. The roaches just eat those storms. They're unfortunately going and they're not even being microed out of it now roaches do have a lot of armor but that was four storms right there and we still have the colossi burning down now the corruptors are going to eat these colossi but the uh, roach army is already going to be decimated at that point the zealots come in the zealots even get a surround on the roaches there and it looks like the last oh they're great another good force field there kind of keeping that roach trapped you only did trap one for that energy the zealots are kind of running it down but they're going to pull back that's very smart now we see that we have a lot of open space here right down in the bottom right of the screen that we could have a proxy pylon there just up the ramp to the left we can have a proxy pylon there but I'll, and as we're going into this third base also it'd be super helpful we also have a robotics bay that's not creating anything and we have uh 200 minerals coming up right now actually so that's enough for a warp prism to get that out and have that thing now the corruptors may give the warp prism a little bit of a problem but it's good positioning you can warp it in you can warp in stalkers to protect it to keep those corruptors from at bay but as it is now we'll keep i'll keep throwing up in the bottom right a uh, little site like picture in picture screens that let you see the warp ins that they're coming in when they're far away just try to notice how much time is spent crossing that map for those warp ins like it's an enormous amount of time and the thing that makes Protoss so strong with their pushes is that they can warp in directly into their army. There is not that reinforcement time. It it's, happens instantly. Now we do have a third base coming down for the Zerg player, which is great. We we do see that the time right now is coming on like almost 20 minutes. Now just kind of as a note, if you're fully mining, oh, we'll go back a second. Right now we have an engagement. The Corruptors are coming in, but the storms go down all over the roaches. They're not even moving. They just take them. Now we do have the roaches finally moving out and they're going to try to come down, but they're getting trapped against the wall against the Zelts, still another storm comes down. All those Archons are getting warped in at this point as they're out of energy and the Zelts are still doing rather well. We do have reinforcements coming again for the Protoss player, but they're all the way on the other side of the map. Now it looks like the sentries and the Archons are going to go in and try to take care of these 
um, spine crawlers and a good force field there to kind of keep those roaches at bay. They're having to funnel in through the left side. But he is going to have to pull back and let those reinforcement zealots come in and start tanking some of that stuff. The corruptors, on the other hand, are just getting picked off. Unfortunately, they don't have a, a point of being here at this since there's no actual colossi for them. They could actually send uh, or use corruption, but a lot of lower league players don't use that. A lot of a lot of higher league players don't use that. Now we do have the Protoss army getting pushed back all the way back to this proxy pylon that we were talking about before. This is halfway across the map for him to get back to his reinforcements. And you can kind of see that the, the bases are mining out here. Now, if you're what I was saying before that, oh, well, here we go again. It looks like the, the roaches are going to come in here, but there's not a whole lot they can do. They're getting chased off again by the zealots alone. Now, we are at two attack, one armor for the Protoss, and two, two for the roaches. So the roaches do have a slight um, armor advantage at this point, but again, we can kind of see that there's not much economy for for either of the players here. We do have a much higher um, population at this point uh, for the, the Zerg, but it's in roaches, so unfortunately it's not super effective, super efficient units. And we do have the Protoss coming in again. Another storm goes down right on top of those roaches, and the Archons are coming in, and they're just going to destroy. It looks like it. this may be it. We do have some reinforcement coming in. The roaches are just going to stand there and fight, and we can see the the population here plummeting and that ladies and gentlemen is going to be the game now just on a real quick side note since the last few minutes have been very action-packed and we haven't really got to it let's talk a bit about that proxy pylon now for Protoss needing to warp in directly into the army like we discussed before the best options for lower league players to just practice putting up those proxy pylons you need them for supply anyways if they get picked off put up another one somewhere else also get out a warp prism it never hurts to have a warp prism behind your army Keep some stalkers in there to keep it alive and just keep warping in units underneath that warp prism. Now I will say that for this game, Zedeth, and we're going to go with that for the pronunciation of his name, didn't win because of his warp ins, didn't win because of his clean timing. We talked about those, but what he did to win this game was he had amazing force fields. He kept cutting up those roaches and that can just never be underestimated. He did amazing on that, and that should be taken from this game. That's his strength from what we saw, and that's great, and keep that up. Now, please, for everybody watching this, feel free to like and subscribe to my video. Also, down below, you can find my Twitter and my Facebook. Please follow me. And until the next time we talk, please go out, play games, and have fun.